Okay, we go to the five transporting points, Jingwell points, TB1 rushing pass. Location on the fingers, uh, point one tune from the ulnar corner of the nail. How to find TB1? This point is located at the junction of the two tangents bordering the ulnar and proximal margins of the nail, approximately point one tune from the corner of the actual nail. Needling, approximately point two tune vertically or obliquely in a proximal direction or prick to bleed. Caution, avoid needling too close to the nail, painful point. For the action and indication, TB1 clears heat from the upper burner, benefits the ears and tongue, opens the channel and alleviates pain. Special features, TB1 is a jingle point, metal point, entry point, specially indicated for acute disorders. TB1 is used in exterior patterns of invasion of external exterior wind heat, causing fever, sore throat, or earache. In invasions of wind heat, it is the presence of earache that indicates the use of the triple burner channel. This point can be used for both the greater young and lesser young stages of the six-stage pattern identification. However, it is particularly important for the lesser young stage. TB1 is also affects also affects the pericardium and can clear pericardium heat. This explains the many indications for tongue problems. Its effect on the pericardium channel is due to the influence of the chi of the pericardium channel, which ends at the fingertips. This phenomenon can be compared to that of the tributary of a river flowing into another river, where the waters of the two rivers meet. The flow from the first river can still be seen as a separate current before the two rivers merge completely. In a similar way, when the pericardium channel ends and merges into the triple burner channel at the fingertips, the influence of the pericardium chi persists for a little way into the triple burner channel. For this reason, TB1 has many indications related to the tongue problems which stem from the heat in the pericardium. So we have here the connection between the pericardium and the triple burner channel at fingertips. The above is actually a general principle that applies to all the channels that starts at the fingertips or toes. That is the yang channel of the hand and the yin channel of the foot. Their first point well receives the influence of the chi deriving from the related channel that ends at the fingers or the toes. Example, the triple burner from the pericardium, large intestine from lungs, kidneys from bladder, spleen from stomach, etc. Like many other triple burner points, TB1 benefits the ears as we have seen many kidney channel points also benefits the ears and it's therefore important to clarify the different action of the triple burner and kidney channels on the ears. The kidneys nourishes the ears in the sense that they send chi and essence up to the ears to promote good hearing. Therefore, a kidney pathology causes mostly slow onset, chronic ear problems such as slow onset tinnitus and deafness. The triple burner influences the ears through its channel and also through its related channel within the lesser yang, that is the gallbladder channel. A pathology of the triple burner or gallbladder channel also uh, causes mostly acute ear problems. Infective ear problems and ear problems connected to the invasion of exterior wind rate. Examples are earache, ear discharge, otitis, an acute earache with invasion of wind heat in the children, itching in the ear, eczema in the ears, etc. Finally, triple burner one can also be used as the distal point to remove obstruction from the channel. It is very effective as a distal point for shoulder problems according to triple burner channel. In such cases, it is combined with triple burner 14. TB1 clears the heat 
those with red eyes dry mouth, thirst, bitter taste. It also expels exterior wind, those having fibril disease, aversion to cold, fever, alternation of feeling of cold and feeling of heat. It also clears pericardium heat, those having heart pain, stiff tongue, curled tongue, pain at the root of the tongue, cracked tongue. Also, triple burner one benefits the ears, those having tinnitus and deafness and earache. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss REN6, C of G, Yuan source point. REN6 is located on the anterior midline, 1.5 soon inferior to the umbilicus, or 3.5 soon superior to the upper border of the pubic symphysis. How to find the distance between the center of the umbilicus and the upper border of the pubic symphysis is divided into five soon, which can vary considerably from the patient's fingered soon. Therefore, only proportional tune measurements should be used here. A helpful device is an elastic tape. REN6 is located on the midline, 1.5 soon inferior to the umbilicus or 3.5 soon superior to the upper border of the pubic symphysis. Needling, vertically 0.8 to 1.5 soon. Caution should be observed in the peritoneum and pregnancy. According to some authors, this point should never be needled with strong reducing techniques owing to its strong chi tonifying action. Moxa and capping are recommended for this point. Actions or indications tonifies the original chi or yuan chi, as well as chi in general, strengthens the kidneys, especially kidney yang, regulates chi, harmonizes blood, and eliminates dampness. Special features of REN6. Important tonification point for mental and physical exhaustion. Strengthens especially the qi and yang with moxibustion, one of the most important acupuncture points. REN6 is a major point of the body. It has a powerful tonifying effect on qi and yang, especially if used with direct moxa. It can be used for extreme physical and mental exhaustion and depression. REN6 tonifies kidney yang and original qi and is especially effective when treated with direct moxa cones and can therefore be used for chilliness, loose stools, profuse pale urination, physical weakness, mental depression, and lack of willpower. REN6 also raises sinking qi and, in, and is used in all cases of sinking of qi in the lower abdomen, causing uterine prolapse, profuse menstrual bleeding from qi deficiency, chronic and persistent vaginal discharge, frequent urination, incontinence of urine, and the feeling of bearing down. Besides tonifying qi, REN6 also moves qi and eliminates stagnation in the lower burner. It can therefore be used for lower abdominal pain, deriving from qi stagnation. Combined with GB34, it moves stagnant qi in the lower abdomen and relieves pain and distension in this area. It will be useful to compare the actions of REN6 with those of REN4. REN4 nourishes blood and yin. No effect in moving qi affects uterus and tonifies the kidneys. While REN6 tonifies qi and yang, moves qi and eliminates stagnation, affects intestines, tonifies the spleen. REN6, to summarize, tonifies qi and yang. So for qi deficiency, original qi deficiency, yang collapse, tiredness, cold limbs, loose stools, weak voice. REN6 raises sinking qi. So good for uterine prolapse, profuse menstrual bleeding from qi deficiency, chronic and persistent vaginal discharge, frequent urination, incontinence of urine, feeling of bearing down. REN6 tonifies original qi, regulates qi in the lower burner for urinal and genitourinary disorders, umbilical pain, abdominal pain. 
Qi Hai is closely connected to the lower Dan Tian, a major energy center of the body that serves as a reservoir of Qi for the whole system. It is the place from which Qi emerges and returns. There are two seas of Qi on Ren Mai, Ren 6 and Ren 17. Ren 6 is not one of the points included in the four seas. As a sea point, it gives access to deeper reserves of chi for the whole body, mind, and spirit. It is a powerful point to regenerate, stabilize, and ground the lower jaw, and thereby the whole body, mind, and spirit. When there is fragility, cold, or when the person finds it hard to maintain their center in response to the demands imposed by life. It can be great in combination with Ren points at the level of the heart to help the Jing, Shen, S, and spirit connection. When someone has exhausted his reserves at every level through overwork, insufficient or inadequate nourishment or chronic illness and emotional turmoil, it can be hard for them to sustain the good connection needed between the lower and upper jaw, the kidney and the heart. That connection is necessary for the spirits to stay and necessary for the person to have sufficient stillness to be able to follow the guidance and natural rhythms of the spirits. Ren 6, C of Chi, and other lower jaw Ren points are for the heart, the quiet strength that encourages the spirits to rest in the heart and that enables the continual reconstitution of life within us. Ren 6 tonifies Qi and Yang and is therefore often used in long-term depletion when the enlivening and rejuvenating aspect of Qi and Yang can help lift inertia of the mind and spirit from deficiency or stagnation of Qi. It is used more to promote Qi than to nourish the blood. We use Ren 6 when everything is an effort and there is a lack of will. Moxa can bring vitality to a cold or fatigued spirit as much as to a cold lower jaw. Ren 6 regulates chi and moves stagnant chi, promotes original chi, tonifies blood, moves chi, tonifies kidneys, regulates ren vessel and menstruation. Regulates lower jaw, transforms dump by tonifying the chi and moving stagnant fluids affects the intestines because of its effect on damp and fluids. We use REN6 in combination with REN12 or Stomach25 to rescue the chi in case of over-treatment or needle shock. Use very large moxa cones, no needling. This important point acts like a great reservoir or sea of energy for the whole kingdom. It can be called upon to revitalize the system and to replenish depleted chi energy. For a complete lack of anything, and is especially useful for chronic illness, lack of will, complete exhaustion, or for those with a weak constitution because it strengthens the kidneys and thus our original chi. It is commonly and effectively used with moxa, particularly for a person who is cold or resigned in body, mind, or spirit. We combine REN6 with REN4 to help strengthen the male libido. Consider for prolapse or if the patient has a history of miscarriage. Thank you for listening. We continue with the Loop connecting points, do one, long, strong. Location, on the midline, midway between the tip of the coccyx and the anus. How to find, first locate the coccyx superior to the anus, then palpate for its tip. The tip of the coccyx palpate the pressure towards the anus. Do one can often be located based on strong uh, DJ sensation. REN1 is located anterior to the anus, posterior to the genitals. Bladder 35 is located 0.5 tune lateral to the midline at the level of the tip of the coccyx. Midline after thorough disinfection, vertically 0.5 to 1 tune. Avoid puncturing the rectum. For the action and indication, do one clears damp heat, lifts the cheek, opens the channel, and alleviates pain. Comes the shen. 
for the special features. The one is a loop connecting point, meeting point with friend my GB and kidney channels. The one is the beginning and connecting point of the governing vessel. Being the connecting point, it is con it connects with the direct directing vessel. It can therefore be used to eliminate obstruction from both the directing and the governing vessel. For this reason, it affects both the lower orifices. The one is very much used as a local point for prolapse of the anus. It also resolves damp heat in the anus and is therefore used for hemorrhoids. Being at the lowermost end of the governing vessel, the one can be used to affect the top part, that is the brain. It is therefore used to calm the mind and open the mind's orifices in mental diseases characterized by agitation and hypomania. The one regulates the burning and directing vessels. It dissolves dampness, regulates the lower orifices, having those having painful urination, difficult urination, retention of urine, dark urine, hemorrhoids, difficult defecation, diarrhea, prolapse of rectum. Also comes the mind and opens the mind's orifices, those having manic depression, and also extinguishes the interior wind, those having opistotonus, tetany, epilepsy, tremors of head. <clears throat> The one is the first point and the loop connecting point of the burning vessel and all its indication reflect the pathways and function of the burning vessel principal and loop connecting pathways. The burning vessel winds around the anus and the one is an important local point in the treatment of hemorrhoids, prolapse of the rectum and disorders of defecation. The burning vessels enter the kidneys and is and its anterior pathway uh, winds around the genitals. The one is therefore also indicated for various disorders of urination, such as painful urinary dysfunction, difficult urination and retention of urine, as well as sexual taxation and unusual symptoms of seminal emission induced by fear and, and fright. Emotions which classically considered to injure the kidney and heart. The burning vessel ascends along the entire length of the spinal column and enters the brain, while its loop connecting channel spreads in the occiput, as well as the lumbar and sacral pain and stiffness of the spine. The one is indicated for heaviness of the head. The spiritual pivot gives a specific indication for disorders of the burning loop connecting channel. It is excess. Uh, there is stiffness of the spine, and if deficient, there is heaviness of the head and shaking of the head. Although the heart is most frequently cited as the resonance of the spirit, since its early beginning, Chinese medicine has been able to hold the concurrent belief that the head and brain also influence the spirit. Thus, the essential question stated, the head is the resonance of the intelligence. The sun, si miao, in the thousand Dukat formula said, the head is the supreme leader, the place where man's spirit concentrates. Since the governing vessel enters the brain and its anterior pathway ascends through the heart, the one is indicated for such manifestation of disordered spirit as mania, mud walking, and fright epilepsy, as well as for pain of the heart. According to Qigong theory, there are three important gates or passes in the practice of qi circulation through the burning vessel. These gates through which it is more difficult to circulate the qi are the coccyx pass in the region of du one, the lumbar pass in the region of pigment du four, and the occipital pass in the region of bladder nine. Du one has been accorded a great variety of different names. It's best known Long strong is said to refer either to the burning vessel of which this is the first point, which is long and strong, or to this point's ability to make the penis long and strong. Alternative names include long push e, dragon and tiger point, heavenward looking summit, and stairway to heaven. 
Thank you for your attention. Let's talk about Bladder 26, Gate of Origin Shoe, a back transporting point. Bladder 26 is located 1.5 soon lateral to the posterior midline on the level of the lower border of the spinous process of the fifth lumbar vertebra. How to find bladder 26? For orientation in the lumbar region, first, determine the Toffler's line. Place both hands directly superior or lateral to the highest points of the iliac crests, joining the thumbs on the midline at the lumbar spine. In most cases, this line intersects with the spinous process of lumbar four. This varies depending on the patient's position. Next, locate the lower border of the spinous process of L5, and on this level, locate bladder 26, 1.5 soon in a lateral direction. Located on the same level are extra point B8, or Botox 8 on the midline, and a point of extra Botox 2.5 soon lateral to the midline. Needling bladder 26 is done vertically, 0.5 to 1.5 soon. Actions or indications strengthens the back, especially for kidney deficiency syndromes, regulates the lower burner. Bladder 26 is very frequently used as a local point in chronic lower back ache and should always be used if tender on pressure. Bladder 26 is the most effective point for lower back ache, both bilateral and unilateral, and it is nearly always tender on pressure. It is very close to the sacroiliac joint, often involved in lower back ache. Use bladder 26 nearly always in conjunction with bladder 23 and with the extra point, shi chi shui sha, which is on the governing vessel below the tip of lumbar five. In summary, bladder 26 strengthens lower back, so good for lower back ache, sciatica, pain in the buttocks, weakness or stiffness of the lower back, difficulty in bending the back, moves chi and blood in the lower burner, so for abdominal distension and pain, abdominal masses, benefits urination, for enuresis, frequent urination, difficult urination. Bladder 26, due to its proximity to the fifth lumbar vertebra, is much used in the treatment of lumbar pain. Various classics of Chinese medicine have specified the use of bladder 26 in the treatment of wind taxation lumbar pain, that is, lumbar pain due to attack and injury by exterior pathogenic factors which lodge in the back and over time lead to deficiency. This is a common development of back pain due to painful obstruction and reflects the fact that not only can kidney deficiency lead to weakness of the back and hence invasion of exterior pathogens, but also that prolonged retention of pathogenic factors, especially when the bones are injured, can weaken the kidneys. Thus, Standards of patterns and treatments said in backache, wind, damp, cold, heat, sprain, blood stasis, chi stagnation, accumulations are all the manifestation. The root is always kidney deficiency. The essential question stated in chronic bone painful obstruction where the pathogenic factor repeatedly attacks, it will reach and reside in the kidneys. The action of bladder 26 on the lumbar pain is so valuable that in clinical practice, it may be used for any pattern, not solely deficiency. And it is one of the points that should be palpated and needled if tender in all cases of back ache. Tonifying action of bladder 26 is implied in its name, gate of origin shoe. It is further indicated for deficiency disorders like wasting and thirsting disorder, deficiency distension, diarrhea, and various urinary disorders, all characterized by deficiency of the kidneys. This is an area that contains several gate points. Traversing the front of the body, REN4, N5, 
are first gate and stone gate, respectively. 2-4 is gate of life. Origin pass, an alternative name for bladder 26, reminds one of the nature of the energetic work of this area. First gate on the bladder meridian negotiates the territory between the sacrum and the lumbar vertebrae. As any hinge or gate, it needs to move freely within its designated territory. Otherwise, stagnation and blockage occurs. First gate can free up this gate in this fundamental energetic region and, as its name implies, accesses a deep level of chi with which to tonify the area. Bladder 26 strengthens the lower back, removes obstructions from the channel. It's good for problems of the lower jaw, like frequent urination, incontinence, abdominal distension, diarrhea. Bladder 26 is local point for chronic low back ache. It is often tender upon palpation and can be needled if then tender. Especially good for lumbar pain from external pathogenic attack, which has lodged in the channels of the back. In this sector of the body, again, there are a number of gates. So we have the REN4, which is first gate, REN5, stone gate. And on the back, we have this gate. We have this point above which is 2-4, the gate of life. We use bladder 26. If a patient is stuck at some level and you cannot get through to their core, it opens the gate to the officials and it partially affects all the other gates in the body. Very good for chronic lumbar pain and hemorrhoids. Thank you for your attention. We continue with the large intestine channel, divergent channel. As a general pattern, the young divergent channel follow a pathway different from that of the yin ones. Generally, the pathway of the young divergent channel follows the following pattern. They, they separate from their respective young main channel. They enter the young organ to which they are connected and often through, though not in all cases, the related yin organ. They then merge, emerge at the neck where they join their related main channel. So from young main channel goes to the neck, the young divergent. So together with the poo and sound. The lung, the large intestine divergent channel pathway uh, separates from the large intestine primary channel on the hand, travels along the arm to the shoulder, LI15, from LI15, a branch runs to the thorax and branch out into the breast. Another branch runs to the cervical spine, the seventh cervical vertebra, returns from there to the supraclavicular fossa, descends to the large intestine, ascends to the lung, and emerges to exterior at stomach 12. It then travels along the antero lateral aspect of the neck and connects with the large intestine primary channel and the lung divergent channel at LI18 at one of the six key uh, influences. The LI and lung are six influence. Clinical importance strengthens the connection between the lung and the large intestine, some two organs. Points on the large intestine primary channel can therefore be used for disorders of the lungs and vice versa points of the lung primary channel can treat disorders of the large intestine. A branch of the large intestine divergent channel spreads from LI15 across the thorax and the breast, thus extending the action of the points of the large intestine primary channel to these regions. For example, the treatment of mastitis myalgias and thoracic pain. Diverges from the large intestine main channel on the hand. It ascends to LI15 and travels to the spine. It crosses to the supraclavicular fossa and ascends to the throat and neck with, where it unites with the large intestine main channel. A branch from the clavicle connects with the lungs and the large intestine. So we have here the large intestine divergent channel travels medially to the spinal column, 
descends to the thorax, breast, lungs, and large intestine, and ascends along the throat. Thank you for your attention. Now let's talk about tips for point location. First, we have the elastic tape. A marked elastic tape has proven a very useful tool for simplifying tune measurements and facilitating correct point location. It is especially recommended for measurements on the abdomen, the shape of which can vary considerably from patient to patient. An elastic tape, one to two centimeters wide and 40 centimeters long, is marked at regular intervals of 2 cm, which can optionally be numbered from 1 to 20. The tape is placed onto the distance to be measured, stretching it according to the correct number of chun for that particular distance. This method allows the use of proportional chun for each individual patient. Examples, for locating points on the upper abdomen, stretch the tape so that eight units cover the distance between the sternocostal angle and the center of the umbilicus. For locating points on the lower abdomen, stretch the tape so that five units cover the distance between the upper border of the pubic symphysis and the center of the umbilicus. Patient positioning and body movements. To locate certain points, it can be very helpful to ask the patient to assume a particular position or to perform a specific movement. Examples, for locating points on the pericardium channel on the forearm, ask the patient to tightly press the thumb and little finger together. This will make the tendons more visible. So here we have a very simple way of locating pericardium seven. So we press the thumb and little finger together for better presentation of the tendons, okay? Then another one is the tiger mouth grip as a location help for lung seven and LI six. For locating LI four, ask the patient to press his thumb and index finger together. A muscle bulge will form. LI4 is located on its highest point. When turning the wrist joint from a pronated to a half supinated position, the palpating finger will glide into a bony cleft just proximal to the styloid process of the ulna. SI6 is uh, easily located using this technique. As the palpating finger glides along the skin, the skin bulge forming in front of it will arrest the finger at the point to be located. This method is very useful for quick location of triple burner five or pericardium six. Then we have the spreading hands technique according to Kinnig and Vampura. The spreading hands technique is particularly useful for quickly determining the midpoint of a given distance. For this purpose, the little fingers of each hand are placed on the endpoints of the distance to be measured. Both hands are then evenly spread over the distance. The thumbs are joined in the middle indicating the midpoint of the distance. Examples, to determine the midpoint of the 16 tune distance between the popliteal crease and the prominence of the lateral malleolus, the little fingers are placed on both endpoints of this distance. So here we have uh, stomach 35 at the level of the popliteal crease or knee joint space. So as you can see, uh, to locate stomach 40, all we have to do is uh, locate the midpoint between stomach 35 and the upper 
in the on the highest prominence of the lateral malleolus. To locate 220, the hands are placed on the lateral aspects of the patient's head with the little fingers touching the apices of the ears. The thumbs are then joined on the vertex of the head and will be pointing to do 20. Thank you for your attention. We continue with the four C's, do 16 Feng Fu. Location on the posterior midline directly be below the external occipital protuberance in the depression between the origins of the trapezius muscles. How to find the external occipital protuberance is a hump-shaped projection on the posterior surface of the occipital bone on the midline and slightly superior to the craniocervical junction. Locate do 16 in the depression on the posterior midline that can be palpated directly in here to the protuberance and between the two origins of the trapezius muscles. Generally, do 16 is located approximately one tune superior to the posterior hairline. GP20 is located at the same level below the occiput in a depression between the origins of the capricious and sternic legal mastoid muscle. Needling 0.5 to 1 tune slightly obliquely in an inferior direction. Bend the patient's head slightly forward when needling. Caution, dangerous point with deep needling. No stimulation. Strictly no needling in a superior direction. Danger of puncturing the cerebr cerebello medullary cistern. Also site for subcipital puncture. The needle should be inserted into nuptial ligament. According to some authors, maxibustion is contraindicated. For the action indication, do 16 dispel external wind, comes the internal wind and the shen. Nourishes the sea of marrow, lightens the shen. The special features, meeting point of the young Wei Mai, according to some authors, the young Chiao Mai, Sea of Maro point, window of heaven point, Sushi Miao ghost point, used for all disorders which are caused by external or internal wind and which are characterized by sudden onset, changing location and or intensity of this of disorder in voluntary movements. Do 16 eliminates both exterior and interior wind. It can therefore be used for exterior attacks of wind cold or wind heat as well as for patients for interior wind, such in wind stroke, epilepsy, or severe giddiness. Its capacity in eliminating wind in general makes a very important point to relieve headaches from liver yang, rising liver wind, liver fire, and acute headaches from exterior wind. Its action in treating headache is also partly due to these points being a point of the eye system which emerge from the brain at Do16 Feng Fu. Do16 is a point of the sea of marrow. Marrow fills up the brain and this point can clear the mind and stimulate the brain. Do16 extinguishes the interior wind of pistotonus, a fascia from wind stroke, Wind stroke hemiplegia. Spells exterior wind, those having aversion to cold, fever, body aches, occipital stiffness, and headaches. It also nourishes marrow, benefits the brain for those having headache, dizziness, tinnitus, blurred vision. It also comes the mind and offense the mind's reticence. Those having manic behavior, desire to commit suicide, sadness, and fear. The essential question, the yellow emperor says, I have heard that wind is the beginning of the hundred diseases. What is the method of treating it by acupuncture? His advisors, Chi Bong replies, wind enters from the exterior giving rise to shivering, sweating, headache, heaviness of the body, and aversion to cold. Treat it by needling do 16. Wind, which may be of exterior or interior origin is a young pathogenic factor that therefore tends to affect the outer and upper young portion of the body. Exterior wind predominantly injures the head 
and superior superior portion of the body while the inferior wind steers upward and harass the top of the body. The governing vessel is known as the sea of the young channels, and while many of its points are effective to eliminate both exterior and interior wind, do 16 pallets of wind is preeminent of this purpose. Its importance in the treatment of both kinds of wind disorder is emphasized in investigation into points along the channels by the Ming Dynasty author Yang Xinxi, uh, who said that Ping Fu Du 16 is indicated for all types of wind diseases. When pathogenic wind invades the exterior portion of the body and impairs the ability of defensive chi to warm the skin, there will aversion to cold and shivering. If defensive chi is deficient and pathogenic wind attacks, the pattern known as disharmony of the nutritive chi and defensive chi may ensue. They are uh, characterized by chills and shivering accompanied by sweating. The application of Do16 in the treatment of this particular pattern of Thai Yang wind disorder is emphasized in the treatise on injury by cold which says in Thai Yang disorder initially prescribed uh, we sing Kang. If this causes agitation, needle, GB20, and do 16, then uh, re, uh, re, re prescribe Gu Xi Kang. Recovery will follow. If the pathogenic wind enters the channels and collaterals and penetrates the joints, there may be migratory ache and pain known as wind painful obstruction. In all such cases, do 16 is indicated. Do 16 is an is of equal importance in the treatment of interior wind, which derives from disharmony of the sangku, particularly the liver, and rushes upward with the neck and head and brain. It is therefore indicated for headache, head wind, dizziness, blurred vision, upward staring eyes, and wind stroke. Not only is do 16 is able to descend the pathogenic wind from the head in such cases, but it is also an important point to nourish the brain. According to the spiritual Bible, uh, do 16 is a point of the sea of Barrow. Its point above is the top of the head, below is a king pool. And when the sea of Barrow is in excess, then there is lightness of the body and much strength, and a person self exceeds the normal level. When the sea of Barrow is insufficient, there is whirling sensation of the brain. Uh, dizziness, tinnitus, pain of the lower leg, impairment of vision, indolence, and desire to sleep. The wide ranging effect of Do16 on the head region is partly emphasized both by the statement of Su Xi Miao in the Thousand Direct Thousand Dupat formulas that Do16 treats the hundred diseases of the head, and by the alternative name Clear Headedness given to this point in the classic song to keep up your sleep. Due to the location of do 16 in the neck region, the pivot of the head as well as to its ability to eliminate wind and nourish the sea of marrow, do 16 is an important point in the treatment of headache, headwind, and neck disorders. The traditional term headwind has two principal meanings. Firstly is it is used to refer to severe, long, standing, and recurrent headaches, for example, migraine that are recalcitrant to treatment, in contrast to single incident of headaches. Secondly, it describes a condition deriving from the from attack by exterior wind, which invades the channels of the head and gives rise to headache, dizziness, and division of the mouth and eye. Although primarily indicated for occipital Taiyang region, headache, as would be expected from its location, Do16 is a meeting point of the burning vessel with Yang linking vessel. This extraordinary vessel also links all the Yang channels and specially connects with such important points for headaches as GB13 to GB20 on the lateral side of the head and stomach ache on the forehead. 
do 16 may therefore be needed in Xiaoyang temporal or Yang mean frontal region headaches when the primary pathogen is twin. As far as the neck is concerned, the ability of Ping Fu Du 16 to benefit this region is emphasized in the great compendium of acupuncture and oxybustion, which recount how the great second century physician Wu Tu treated the Emperor Wu of the Three Kingdoms era for stiff neck. It is related that as soon as Wu Tu needled Du 16, the Emperor was cured. Thank you for your attention. Now let's uh, continue with common cold and influenza. This time we discuss the pattern, wind cold, prevalence of cold. The treatment principle of common cold and influenza must be solidly based on the differentiation between defensive chi and chi levels. At the defensive chi level, it is imperative to release the exterior and expel wind. At the chi level, the treatment principle is to clear chi. Wind cold prevalence of cold. So this is at the defensive chi level. Clinical manifestations, aversion to cold, shivering, fever, no sweating, occipital headache, stiff neck, body aches, slight cough, runny nose with white discharge, sneezing. Tongue, no change in the initial stages. Pulse, floating tight. This is the classic greater yang pattern with prevalence of cold. The absence of sweating indicates the prevalence of cold. This pattern is an excess pattern occurring in people with a relatively strong body's chi. Treatment principle, Release the exterior, expel wind, scatter cold, restore the diffusing and descending of lung chi. Points, lung seven, LI4, bladder 12, GB20, DU16, bladder 13, LI20, DU23, DU20, kidney seven. Reducing method, cupping on bladder 12. Direct moxa can be used after withdrawing the needles. For example, on bladder 12 or bladder 13. Some doctors reinforce the points first and then reduce them in order to summon the defensive chi first and then expel the pathogenic factor. They use this method both for wind cold and wind heat. Lung 7, LI4, and bladder 12 are the three most important points to expel wind cold. Cupping on bladder 12 is extremely effective. In most cases, just these three points are sufficient to clear the condition. Other points may be selected according to symptoms and signs. GB20 and DU16 expel wind and are selected if the headache and stiff neck are pronounced. Bladder 13 restores diffusing and descending of lung chi and is selected if the cough is pronounced. LI20 and DU23 expel wind and clear the nose and are used if sneezing and runny nose are pronounced. DU20 expels wind and relieves headache. Kidney 7 is used in conjunction with LI4 to cause sweating. It should be reinforced while LI4 should be reduced. Thank you for listening.